we're having a giveaway. I want to hear from you to find out what content you want to hear. So email me at brad at physiciansguidetodoctoring.com with a suggestion for a topic you'd like covered or a guest you'd want to hear on the show. And you'll be entered into a lottery for a PGD Yeti tumbler. I'll do the drawing in two weeks and announce the winner in our newsletter. So you have until two weeks from when you hear this, from when this airs, to enter. May the most loyal listener win. Welcome to the forefront of high-performance medical apparel, where comfort meets cutting-edge technology. Introducing Cure, spelled K-Y-U-R, where they treat medical professionals like athletes who demand the most innovative fabrics with technical styling and a performance fit from our gear. Award-winning designer Nick Sienski is leveraging his two decades of creating technically advanced apparel for Olympians, mountaineers, and astronauts to revolutionize the medical apparel market. Cure scrubs are engineered for extreme durability and ultimate comfort. Crafted with their best-in-class fabrics, they bring you the most durable scrub pants, hybrid scrub tops with certified fabric, and a thermoregulating base layer, all manufactured in the USA and using American-made textiles. Visit curemd.com, that's K-Y-U-R-M-D.com, and experience the future of medical apparel today. Save 25% when you use code PGD25 at checkout. Cure, where science meets comfort. So many of us have abandoned business attire in the office for scrubs. So is it time to rethink them? Well, this former designer for Under Armour and Arcteryx thinks so. So he designed them as high-performance attire. Check it out. Hey, this is Brad Block, host of The Physician's Guide to Doctoring. This is a personal and professional development podcast for physicians where we have experts on the show that try to teach us everything we should have been learning while we were memorizing Krebs cycle. Prior to COVID, I had been wearing a shirt and tie to work. And actually, prior to that, I was wearing a shirt and tie and a jacket, a sport jacket to work. And then with all the procedures I do, that got a little cumbersome. So I dialed it back to a shirt and tie. I think it was important to me that I looked sharp, that I looked put together. Because if you've ever been to a doctor yourself and they look disheveled, right, that doesn't give you much confidence in their ability. And in fact, there are some studies that show that the patients want to see us in our white coats. Now, I don't like the white coat because it ends up being an off-white coat with all sorts of stains, no matter how much you bleach it and wash it, it's never fit very well. So I thought I looked best, shirt, tie, put together. Well, then COVID happened, right? And especially at the beginning, we weren't sure about how it was transmitted. So I started wearing my old scrubs to work. And I would get home, I would take my clothes off in the garage, put them in the laundry, wash them, sometimes even consider burning them, right? Just You just wanted to not bring anything from the office or the hospital into your house. Well, you know, lockdown ended and things have returned mostly to back to the way they were, short of now we're more open and willing to wear masks. But I'm still wearing scrubs, and I debated going back to wearing shirt and tie again. But I feel like in the same way the dot-com boom in the early 2000s caused, and all those programmers that would show up in a hoodie and shorts caused that whole industry to dress down a bit. And now you know, business casual became more acceptable. I feel like scrubs have now become much more acceptable to wear in the workplace. But the scrubs I had were, you know, these ill-fitting hospital scrubs. And so we have someone on the show today that seems to have solved that problem, threaded that needle between looking sharp and looking put together, but still wearing scrubs that you could just take off and put on high heat in the washing machine take them out, and they still look great. So, so we have today Nick Sienski. He was born, he has a really interesting history. He was born in South Africa, raised in multiple countries in Southern Africa, ultimately had to flee Zimbabwe at the start of the Rhodesia Bush War. When he was living in Zimbabwe, living in a mining town, there was no snow, clearly. And then he ended up lo- moving to Murdochville, Canada, where the first snowfall buried their entire house. Well, that took him on his life's adventure. Ended up taking up skiing, 
joined the Southern Ontario freestyle team. Don't worry, we'll get to how this gets back to scrubs. And then after high school, spent the next 11 years climbing and skiing on some of the highest mountains in the world. Well, in doing so, sometimes he failed the summit and even got injured from equipment failures. So that inspired him to get involved in equipment and developed equipment for Olympians, U.S. Special Forces, and even astronauts to bring innovative products that help them accomplish their goals. Well, as the pandemic affected many of us, it affected him as well. And he lost his job at Under Armour and for the first time in 13 years was an employed. He quickly realized that medical scrubs were in desperate need of reinvention. So he put his unique skill set to work and launched Cure, spelled K-Y-U-R, and took the next 24 months to source American-made fabrics and design garments that delivered unprecedented levels of performance, comfort, and durability. Of note, he and his wife also started Mission 14, a nonprofit that fights human trafficking, and they sponsor two annual conferences a year on human trafficking. And he's also built a sewing school in Nicaragua, where they've taught commercial sewing to 400 people and helped almost all of them to find jobs. So Nick Sienski, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm honored to be here. So you said, you know, you saw the opportunity we hadn't. Yes, I've been wearing the same scrubs that my mentors wore and their mentors wore. How did you end up choosing healthcare as the field for an update on attire? How did you, as someone not in the field, how did you realize that? It was before I got laid off. I uh, had a friend in the military who got hurt overseas, and, and I ended up going to Walter Reed with him to visit one of his friends who had just lost his leg. I got to admit, it absolutely rocked my world in the sense that I thought that this would be the opinion of technology, the best tech for our veterans. And whether it was doctors, what they were wearing, or what the patients were using, this individual had lost his leg below the knee. And they had put a sleeve over his stump. And every 30, 40 minutes, he would roll this thing off, which was basically like this really thick old neoprene. He would roll it off and just pour the sweat out of it. And then he'd roll it back onto his stump. And I worked probably an hour away. And I had a machine that I knew that I could solve that problem with like tomorrow. Make a highly compressive product that was breathable, comfortable to wear, and wouldn't cause this irritation. I invited Walter Reed's individuals to come up, doctors to come up and see this technology and just tell me if they thought that this is something that we could use to help them, to help these individuals. I invited them twice. They declined to come. And I started thinking, well, why is that? Well, is there something broken in this system? Why is there a, a patient who's wearing a product from the 70s? where well, clearly the technology has moved on since then. When I got laid off, I started thinking about that again, of this idea that is there something in the medical space that needs reinventing? And I started talking to doctors and nurses and very quickly learned that this one doctor said to me, he's like, you know, I operate millions of dollars worth of equipment every day and I'm wearing $12 scrubs. And through the whole pandemic, we were talking about first responders, doctors, nurses being superheroes. And I thought, there's no way that a $12 scrub is what a superhero would ever wear. So it really started me thinking about what could I do in this space? And I grew up, you know, you talked about my mountain climbing. I grew up wearing gear that was the difference between life and death. I've lost a toe to frostbite because of bad gear, bad breathability. So I get what it takes to keep people comfortable. Working with athletes was the difference between a gold and a silver medal is how that athlete performed. And my job in that field was, how do I make product to make sure that athletes are able to operate at their absolute best potential every minute while they're in the field of play? So I'm taking all of that information. I took all of that information and really started digging into what are doctors and nurses wearing in the hospital, in the operating room, on the hospital floor, doing clinics, and quickly realized that although there are new brands bringing new technologies into the marketplace, for the most part, they are moving the needle an inch where it's better than it used to be. You know, when you think about MASH back in the 70s, right? Hawkeye and those guys wearing those white scrubs. I mean, it's clearly better than that. 
but it could be so much better. I mean, it could be so much better of what we could bring to these individuals to help them be more comfortable. There's no need for people to sweat in an, or doctors and nurses to be freezing or overheating in their environments. Nobody was really doing anything about it. And so to me, it was sort of this light bulb moment of like, well, why don't you do something about it? So I did. Well, there, I, I, I can hear the thoughts of some of my audience members, which is, we have hospital issue scrubs. Everyone gets them from the s same containers in the operating room. You put them on. When you're going into the operating room, you take them off in the locker room at the end and you put them in the laundry and they get laundered in some, I'm sure, high heat, high you know, capacity way. So it's not like we're going to be wearing your scrubs in that situation, but there is a garment that you did design for that. So just tell us about that first so so we can answer the question that I know is in their heads right now. Yes, in the OR, I mean, I think I started hearing a lot from, from doctors and sur surgical staff in ORs about just, you know, heat stress, like, you know, increased fatigue, loss of, you know, you know decreased in concentration, slower reflexes. And I thought, well, there's got to be some way to solve that. I mean, they're trying all kinds of things. They're wearing vests that are pumping cold water around their bodies or, you know, air or other things to try to cool them down. In 2015, I tried to climb six of the world's highest mountains in a single year. And no, nobody back then had done that. And so I, and I bumped into this technology that was thermal regulating. And I don't going to nerd out on you here about how it actually works, but the bottom line is that it actually evacuates the heat buildup off your surface of the surface of your skin. So most people sort of wear wicking products and, and you hear about them. Every brand's got their polyester with wicking. And, and the problem is with wicking is that you actually have to sweat first before the technology moves it away. What this, what I have is a technology that actually evacuates the vapor off your skin. So it keeps your skin cooler. And in doing so, it keeps you cooler. And so your body isn't going up and down, burning up all kinds of energy, trying to regulate its core body, your core body temperature. It keeps it at a 37 and a half degree Celsius level over longer periods of time. And so this base layer product is scientifically proven. And I've worn it, I've worn it, like I said, in the Himalayas. I also ran an ultra marathon across the Sahara with this product on. And so I know it works and we have it, we put it on doctors regularly in the OR and they all love it. And I think the big thing is that this is just an example of technology that is available that's out there that is, that is working and we know that it works. So wearing this product underneath your hospital issued scrubs and your gowns or even your, you know, your lead apron, if, if that's what you need to wear, does actually keep you cooler. And what, tell us about your scrubs. You said there are scrubs out there that have moved things an inch, but right. what else is different about your, I mean, that was kind of underwear, right? Your overwear. You know, it's interesting with a lot of, with a lot of scrubs is that they're, you, you know, the, basically the, the, big, the bigger innovations were they brought in like stretch into the polyester. So now you get a little bit more room to move and they put on a, you know, an antibacterial treatment on it. And so, you know, that, that's all great. The issue that, that I'm seeing is that their fabrics don't last. Most people that are buying scrubs are buying between seven and 12 pairs of scrubs a year. At the end of the day, the reason for that is because they just don't last. They fade, they rip, they tear, the pockets tear. It's, you know, it's made to be a quasi-disposable, planned, obsolescence type of garment. I really didn't like that idea. I wanted to make a scrub that actually lasted. The whole idea of my scrubs is that they're extremely durable. The pants that my scrub pants are made out of was originally developed for special forces in the early 2000s. It's since used by professional football and baseball teams that you see play sports every day of the week. That's how durable this fabric is. And I still have pants and jackets that are over a decade old that I still use and still wear. And the fabric is amazing because it doesn't break down. It's super lightweight, it's very stretchy, and it's insanely durable. And one of the things when I started, what I heard from a lot of first responders was, how are you going to make a pair of pants that actually last? Because they were facing all these issues with torn hems and so on. 
And so this is really what led me down this path. So each one of my scrub pieces is actually made out of a different fabric because I needed, instead of making just a scrub out of a top and bottom out of the same fabric, I wanted to solve problems for each part of the body. And so the pants are insanely durable. They're also water repellent. So they, so fluids just drain, you know, flow right off them. It's important. I got um, vomited on today. So. You did? Yep. I mean, and? okay. So it glanced off me. It wasn't a head on vomit. <laughs> But I mean, in my field, that happens all the time. Someone right. sneezes on you. I had a kid with a bloody nose sneeze and I just oh. got sprayed. That was the beginning of the day. I need to keep seeing patients. So the fact that this repels that is going to be extremely helpful. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to clean myself off clearly, but, you know, I'm not going to have to go home and change or wear a white coat over to cover it up. And you know what? I mean, it's, and they were uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I had a doctor email me back who'd been sort of, you know, struggling with this, you know, these, this pant issue. And uh, his words were, these are game changing. It's sort of like, why hasn't anybody done this before? And I think, you know, nobody's really cared to solve the problem before. And my background is I just obsess details. I'm a closet tinkerer. I'm always tearing things apart and putting them back together. So they function better and I will just keep going. I'm like a dog with a bone until I find the solution to the problem. I just keep going, which is why it's taken me 24 months to sort of find these fabrics, in some case, make these fabrics to solve these actual problems. Because I didn't want to sort of just be another brand that made another thing that is just, you know, I, I really wanted to sort of come in and solve real problems. Yeah. And you're clearly head and shoulders above all the other brands out there, which, you know, I wanted to talk about the price point, it's kind of the elephant in the room, but it sounds like you've already justified the price point, right? Because whereas everyone else, you're going to need to keep buying them, they're going to break down, they're going to start not to look so sharp because of the way that we have to wash things to make sure that we're killing everything on it. It sounds like the price point is justified by the fact that you just, you won't need to keep back going back and buying more. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, obviously we make everything here. It's all American made fabric and, and all the products are made in America. So that, so that does carry a premium. And so, so, so that, that is part of it. You know, the technology and the fabrics isn't inexpensive and which does set us apart from anybody else making these types of products. And then it's, you know, it's all looking at people who really cherish technology. They get it, right? So if you're a skier or a biker or a runner or whatever, people who buy running shoes that make them run longer, they get the technology, te technological benefits. And really, those are the people that are really making this for it. They get it. And I had this discussion in the very early days with the doctor group that I was sort of testing my products with. They came back to me with a price thing as well. And they said, well, why would I pay three and a half, four times as much for my scrub pants from you than what I'm buying currently. And I asked him, well, you know, how many pairs of ski pants do you own? And he goes, well, three pairs of ski pants. And, you know, they're about four to $500 a pair. And it's like, well, how many days are you going to go skiing this year? It's, well, you know, seven on a good year, maybe 12 on a really good year. It's like, well, okay, well, how many days do you go to work? Why wouldn't you want to have pants that you could go to work in that perform like you expect your ski pants to perform, keeping you warm and dry so you can ski longer and have more fun doing what you're doing? As soon as I sort of said that, sort of the light bulb went off and it was like, yeah, of course. But then his response back was, I never, I've never been able to buy a product like that for me at work. And so it just re, for me, it just re-solidified the whole premise of the brand of to come in and solve problems. And for all of us who own our practices, it is also deductible. So keep that in mind. Make sure you <laughs> file it away when you make that purchase under using your business card because it is for work and 100% deductible. Although, as he's described, it's also potentially athletic wear. Like you can use it doing all of these activities because it's designed to be so comfortable and so durable. In fact, you know, funny story. I have a friend of mine. She's a doctor out of Vail. We've climbed together for years. And 
this year, she climbed K2, the world's second highest mountain, and she was wearing our base layer top, same top that you buy online. She wore that. She hiked the 200 miles into base camp and back out using the exact same pair of scrub pants that you can buy on our line online today. I mean, that's so that the product is highly transverse. I mean, you know, I use mine when I travel. I'm not a doctor, obviously, but when I travel, I wear my scrub shirt, my scrub pants, and it keeps me cool and dry and, you know, in airplanes and airports. And, you know, we've got lots of pockets for things. So it's, uh, it's easy to use this product elsewhere. And they look sharp. QRMD, the only clothes you'll ever need. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> There's the time. <laughs> write that down and use that. But yeah, I mean, I think ultimately like, and you know, like a lot of doctors in the early days were sort of saying like, how are you, you know, I'm tired of wearing my pajamas to work was one doctor out of Las Vegas. There's another guy out of Las Vegas who was a, who's actually a really interesting guy. He's a, he teaches ER medicine. He's an ER doctor, but he's also a tactical medic with Las Vegas SWAT. And his comment was like, how are you going to make me look like the professional that I am? So I stand apart. I look People, when they see me coming down a hallway or I'm in a room talking to them, clearly I, I look different, I am different, and I am set apart from just the masses. I don't want to be, because we had this talk about lab coats earlier, and it's, you know, if I'm not wearing a lab coat, how does the individual know that I'm a doctor or a nurse? A head or mirror. Early, or who you got to wear one of those head mirrors. That's how you the identify. Mirror, yeah. If you're drawing a cartoon, a stethoscope and a head mirror. But yeah, you're exactly right. Like, how do we separate, distinguish ourselves because lots of people in the hospital now wear lab coats. So the lab coat doesn't even do that anymore. And you know, I worked on, I worked on with Richard Branson. I designed his flight suit for, for his inaugural flight up into space. And uh, it's probably the most technically, most technical, technically difficult garment I've ever designed. It's over 200 pieces sort of make this flight suit. I would hope so. He's going into space. I know. And so it was interesting talking to him about it. And he was like, you know, he's like, yep, I got all the tech. I got all the tech. Yeah, you're going to keep me dry. All these things. Oh, excellent, excellent. What am I going to look like? What am I going to look like oh, when yeah. I do this? And and it's always been like, whether I work with Olympic athletes or Lindsey Vaughn or special forces, it's the, they get the tech. They need the tech. But the, but it's interesting how the conversation bubbles up to the top. How am I going to look? And for Branson, it was like, okay, well, here's a man who is waited 16 years to go to space, right? And he's overcome a million obstacles to get there. And I wanted him when he walks down the runway to climb into his spaceship to go to space. I wanted him to feel like like a pioneer. Like, I don't want to feel and look like everybody else climbing into a spaceship. Like, what do I look like? How do I have that sort of superhero quality that, that something like, wow, what is that guy wearing kind of thing? And so design for me has always been the same of how do I elevate the game of blending, not just a tech story, but a look story that is different and unique. And it does sort of set that precedent of, I, at the end of the day, I'm going to spend a lot of money on this product. I want it to work, but I want to look good in it too. I want to feel like I am, I know who, what I'm doing and I am who I am and I feel great in it. And that's always been a thing. A funny little other story. I was working with the special forces on a project for a robotic suit. And my job in this, in a program was to build the base layer that was going to sort of fit underneath this thing. And the end of the day, it was like, so the, so four of these guys who were sort of billing, I was working with who are from a uh, SEAL team and uh, they said, yeah, okay, I got it. So, but there may be a time where I got to get out of this suit, this robotic suit, and I may have to run and do something. What am I going to look like? Because you can't make me run across whatever road, desert, wherever, looking like a guy in his underwear. So like, how are you going to make me look like a badass in my underwear while I'm doing this thing? And so even those guys still have that same filter of like, you got to make me look good. So yeah, so, so I've loved the design component of putting all this gear together. And that, that gets back to us, what I was talking about earlier. Like it's important that the patients that we look put together because it'll give the patients more confidence in us. And if we feel good in wearing it, it gives us more confidence in ourselves. Right. Like we feel like, oh, it's not fitting here. We're going to Right. Fidget a little, we're going to be tugging at it, and it's going to be right. uncomfortable. It's going to distract us from what we're going to want to be focusing on. So it all really does, it all ties together. 
And, you know, you were, we're, we're talked a bit earlier too about sort of the evolution of scrubs and sort of what, what's happening in the workplace. And it was interesting hearing you talk about sort of the pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. And I think what I'm seeing right now is that there, the scrubs are being elevated to a desirable product. There are brand, there's brand loyalty starting to build in the world of scrubs. And people are like they wear their athletic wear or their running shoes or even cars that they drive. They are loyal to brands because the brand, they identify with that brand. And that's coming. So this, the idea of the scrub being sort of this throwaway garment that, you know, is quasi meaningless. It's just there to do this one little job is shifting. And I think the, you know, from a consumer standpoint, it's shifting as well. And so I really wanted us to be seen as that sort of that thought leader in this space of like, how are we not just worrying about keeping people comfortable, but how are we keeping them safe? Like our scrub tops are, you know, our level two certified FDA fabric, right? So, so, so the, so, so, there are four levels of certification for for FDA garments for the use in the operating room and in hospitals. And so, so this is a so this has level two certification, which basically means that this will repel bodily fluids, water, et cetera, for over 75 launderings. When I started this whole thing, I thought for sure scrubs were somehow regulated by some government agency. But turns out not so. Turns out you can make a scrub out of anything. And, and some people do. And so when I found this fabric, it was actually made for FEMA and, and they ended up not using it. So I bought it and started using it and was amazed by like, we can actually bring something to the market that is helping, not just keeping you comfortable, it's actually keeping you safe. And so, so it's all of these parts of the puzzle that, that are important sort of put together as we're sort of building these products because I, I really need it to be like the shirts on the back they have a lot of stretch, right? So the whole point is that you can be comfortable in your shirt, but you're not wearing this giant boxy shirt. You look good in it because it's trim fit and it fits you well, but it, because I have all the stretch built into it, I don't have to make this giant product, right? So all of these things come into play and it's I, I sit around here at two o'clock in the morning obsessing all these little weird details. How am I going to solve this little problem to make people look good and, and function better? And we appreciate that you do it. So, so mm-hmm. where, if we want to buy scrubs, it's curemd.com, right? It's K-Y-U-R-M-D.com. M-D.com. Yep. And we actually just last week just got all of our inventory in. So it's been um, probably six months in getting it made. And uh, yeah, so we're excited. We're excited. We have everything in the house and we just finished a photo shoot on Saturday with all colors, all styles. And so, yes, yeah, so we're updating the website so you can see everything. And yeah, so it's good. It's exciting. So while we have you on, tell us about Mission 14 too. That's your humanitarian, your fighting human trafficking project. Tell us about that. So my wife and I went to Nicaragua 2010 with a small group from a small church that we were going to in in Baltimore, in downtown Baltimore. And uh, I didn't really know anything about human trafficking. And so we ended up in this garbage dump and uh, the guy who was sort of looking after us, this local pastor sort of started telling us that, you know, just up there where the trucks come in with all the garbage right by a tree, there were these children sitting by the tree and they were being sold for sex to the dump truck drivers. And what was horrible was that these kids were being sold so their parents could either pick better garbage or they were putting, that's how they contributed to the family who was trying to put food on the table was this, they did this, parents picked garbage and sold it and so on. And so we had no idea this was happening in the world. And, uh, and so we started this little organization and uh, we created a small team in Nicaragua who right next to the garbage dump, we set up this little sewing facility and, uh, you know, working for big brands, a lot of brands make their products in Nicaragua. And uh, so, so we started this learning sewing facility and we train people who are coming out of, you know, very poor environments with very little education, how to sew on commercial machines. And, and then we actually get them jobs in this factory. And it's amazing to see the transformation in these people who are coming out of making a dollar a day, picking garbage or what, doing whatever to getting a job. And, you know, it's interesting too. We learned that we can't just teach them how to sew. We actually have to teach them all the other things because, you know, all of a sudden they're going to get a paycheck, right? They, they don't know what to do with money. So how, how do you, 
what do you do with money? Where do you put it? How do you plan for something like how do you save for something? You know, like, like one woman said, well, Funny, doctors don't know that stuff either. We've got a lot yeah. of podcast episodes on that. Yes, that's true. So it's been, so it's been a wonderful opportunity to sort of work and give back. And so the scrubs, when we ship the scrubs, you get a little bag that the scrubs come with. And the bag is made by the students at the sewing facility because they have to learn how to pattern it and how to cut it and then how to sew it, put it all together. And so, so that's one way, that's one way we give back, but it's certainly been a, an amazing journey with that whole facility. Amazing. Amazing. So for the listeners again, Nick Sienski, Nick Sienski, CureMD, K-Y-U-R-M-D.com. Check it out for the scrubs, for the undergarment. It's amazing. It's durable. And, you know, we'll, you'll, if you see my Instagram feed, you'll be able to see how great I look in them too. Great. That's awesome. Well, thanks for having me. And thanks for helping us out with updating something that has needed updating for a long time. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, I can't wait till the round two. We've already working on next gen. Oh, excited to see it. A final word from our sponsor. Remember, when you choose Cure, you're not just picking the most advanced medical apparel, but you're also contributing to social responsibility. Their profits help empower communities through Mission 14. Go to curemd.com to learn more and make a difference today. Thanks for listening. I have a favor to ask. You listened to the episode until the end, which means you either fell asleep or you really liked the episode. So please... Share it, or like it, or comment on a social media post, or write us a five-star review, something. It would really help me out. And maybe what you learned from this episode can help someone else too. The views expressed in this episode are those of the interviewer and interviewee, and don't represent the views of their employer or even their significant other. Even though the magic of podcasting make it sound like I'm talking directly to you, this is not a doctor-patient relationship, and this is not medical advice, or financial advice, or really any advice. Thank us again for listening to the Physician's Guide to Doctoring.